All right, let's go ahead. Okay, hello everybody. Welcome to the BlockNet's reveal of its decentralized exchange UI. I'm Arlen Kolwick, one of the BlockNet's co-founders. And for a couple of years, we've been building out infrastructure to power into blockchain services. This means making the technology on one blockchain available to use on a dApp on other chains. And we believe that the frictionless monetization of blockchain tech uh, will revolutionize the API ecosystem as we know it. Central to this is decentralized exchange, and not only for dApps, but also for the crypto community. We've been working with VSA partners for the past few months on our front end. VSA reached out to us in around May this year, and as one of the top design firms in the US, they had an interest in venturing into the world of crypto and loved what we were doing. On our side, we were aware of just how badly crypto needed good UI UX work, and in general, needed to focus on user experiences a whole lot more. We got talking, things seemed to click, and after a few months, we're now ready to make public the prototype UI UX design that BSA has done for the BlockNet's decentralized exchange. So without further ado, I'll hand you over to the folks from BSA. They will take you through their work in a live video. And after this, we'll be taking some questions in Reddit. Finally, for those of you who can't watch this live, this Hangout will be recorded and posted on our YouTube channel afterwards. Over to BSA. Awesome, thanks so much. Hey guys, uh, I'm Nick Cabot. Uh, I've been with uh, VSA Partners for uh, about four and a half years um, and got into uh, crypto actually as part of the, uh, the Ethereum ICO launch and have been very much uh, in the space ever since. And over the past year or so, we've been bringing uh, more and more VSAers into the fold here um, across all disciplines, uh, design, UX, branding, marketing, uh, strategy, you name it. Um, so just a little quick background on VSA. Um, we uh, started about 35 years ago as a, as a true design firm. About 10 years ago, we added a, a marketing ad agency capability um, and are now doing digital strategy, media, and, and everything in between. We've got about 250 uh, people or so. Uh, we have offices in Chicago, uh, New York, and San Francisco. Uh, we're also uh, a proudly independent agency. Um, so those of you that don't know, a lot of the marketing advertising world is uh, organized around holding companies, uh, which are these uh, kind of mon monolithic multinationals. So the, the independent nature of VSA and, and kind of what the block net, net team is uh, project represents, I think for decentralization, very much aligned with kind of our own company uh, philosophy. What do we have on the next slide? <laughs> so faces. as I mentioned, Nick Cabot, uh, Director of Digital Strategy uh, here at VSA, and we'll go around the room. Emily from Design. Brian with Project Management. Corey Roach, Associate Director of Technology. Oh, Jerry Steven, <laughs> Kel, Client Engagement. I'm Scott, I'm the Interaction Design Lead for the firm. And Zach Schloss, uh, Senior User Experience Designer. Great. So we'll be uh, presenting uh, the design work today. So as I mentioned, I'm Zach Schloss. Um, I've worked in agency side design and digital for the past eight years. That includes a lot of user research, product design, and interface design. Uh, I worked for clients in fintech, healthcare, and IT. And uh, that means all of my client experiences required a lot of hardworking, uh, very technical digital products and experiences. So a good fit for BlockNet. Uh, on this project, I focused on the features primarily of the interface. So really taking a hard look at um, how this exchange needed to work and hone in on some of the best options uh, for BlockNet. And I worked very closely with my partner, Emily, on visual design to create uh, the user experience of the interface. I'm Emily. I'm a senior designer here. I've been at VSA for about three years. I've been working mostly on uh, web apps and web design, working on um, clients like IBM, CME, some Google. And my role on this project was to create the visual language for the interface and one that's unique for BlockNet. 
I worked very closely with Zach to make sure that the features and the functionality was all translated through the beautiful design and functional design. So we're going to start it today just giving you a brief overview of sort of how we've got to where we, we are today, and uh, then we'll reveal the design. To start out, just a little bit of background. We reviewed uh, a lot of different exchanges across the board, uh, starting with some of the more popular ones and then kind of getting a little bit deeper. Um, we really wanted to become familiar with all the different options that uh, the exchanges are presenting. And what we found was a lot of variety. So of course, variety in style, looking across uh, you know, use of color and charting, um, but also variety in the functions that were presented. And so as we thought about the user experience, all those elements really came together uh, to form our point of view uh, for the BlockNet interface. We focused heavily on the responsive uh, design of the sites, so how they work at or respond to different screen sizes, uh, knowing that this will be used across a multitude of devices. Uh, and sort of as we honed in on the exact features and design, we again revisited and iterated on uh, the interface to really push it so that it has a unique brand uh, feel for BlockNet. So through our research, we knew that these screens would be. There might be a delay on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. There we, just, just, yeah. There we go. Yeah. Um, so looking at the research, we knew that these screens would be full of a lot of text and a lot of data. So we needed to focus on type first. When we were looking for fonts, we were focusing on readability, space economy, and brand expression. Readability, we knew these fonts would be um, displaying at small sizes, so we needed to find some fonts that would be easily readable at, that, at those sizes. Space economy, again, just trying to make sure that we're able to fit a lot of data on the page. Some fonts can tend to be wide, so we were um, focusing on fonts that were readable, but also smaller. Brand expression, we wanted to make sure that we were staying true to the BlockNet brand and even expanding it a bit. Um, and so on the right, you can see the, the fonts that we landed on. We stayed within Google Web Fonts to make sure that we were not affecting the page performance by just um, spending time on loading, loading fonts. Um, we started with Open Sans, which is part of the current BlockNet brand. It's um, a good, flexible, um, and sim simple font that we're using for most of the words on the page. And then we focused on finding a monospaced font, which is on the bottom right. Monospaced fonts are designed so that the letters and characters each occupy the same amount of horizontal space. So down on the bottom left, you can see that a proportional font, um, opposed to a monospaced font, um, does not align really well when uh, text is stacked on top of each other. You've got the same amount of ones and the same amount of nines, but they don't align up to each other. So on the monospace font on the right, you start to see them um, really all occupying the same horizontal space. So this is going to be really great for our exchange of multiple columns of numbers and easy scannability with uh, multiple numeral decimals. So then after we found um, our type, we moved into finding color. About five seconds. Yeah. yeah. Don't look at that. Okay. So then we looked into finding the color. So we knew that we wanted to look at a dark interface for BlockNet and make sure that we are again representing the BlockNet brand. So we started with the BlockNet blue and went just a shade darker to create a um, a good base for our dark interface, which is the top left. Um, we then needed to expand the palette a little bit to find a good call to action button uh, color. So that's the electric blue on the bottom left. Using that to uh, direct the focus of the users to the important pieces on the page, like buttons and links. Um, and we found this kind of represented in some of the photography that's currently on the BlockNet website. Then every trading platform needs a red and a green, of course. 
So uh, we took the reds and the greens and we didn't want to go for a traditional red and green. We wanted to make sure it felt right with the palette and created um, found the split complementaries of our electric blue and then pushed them a little bit to be make sure that they're um, energized and would pop off the page really nicely. These colors are also optimized to when you lay the color on top of our font on top of this dark blue so that they are easily readable and um, don't start to vibrate off of each other. And so you're not going to get um, some eye strain when you're looking at numbers on this dark blue with the greens and reds. Uh, we then paired with the green and the red a complementary gradient to go with it. We liked the idea of using gradients in this space to add even more depth to the page. And um, we're trying to use it tastefully to um, add additional meaning to things like graphs. And how do we take that, um, those color and types to use them together in an application to create a unique style for BlockNet? So we started with pulling inspiration and creating a few different mood boards that had different feels. This is the one we kind of landed on. You can see that we are pulling from some material designs um, inspiration of using depth and shadow um, to create a, a distinguishing elements from each other. So in the top right, you can start to see how we're starting to bring in the Z axis opposed to just the X and the Y, which would be considered flat design. Um, we're starting to bring in that Z axis of um, shadow and create layers on the page, again, adding more depth and um, movement to the page. We started to look at how those gradients would be applied to things like graphs along with the shadowing to bring out more um, information and make sure that you were we were highlighting the right information on each chart. Um, we even started to look at some motion design to start to um, increase comprehension on different graph visualizations. So enough talking about it. <laughs> Let's go ahead and show it. <laughs> okay. You know, there's a little of a delay on YouTube, but here is BlockNet's new decentralized exchange interface. You'll see how the features, colors, and type all come together to form a beautiful user experience on both desktop and mobile. Our responsive interface utilizes one website and code base that responds to screen size, so the experience is seamless across devices. On desktop, all the features are visible in a full screen experience. And on mobile, the features are all easily accessible uh, through the bottom tab navigation. We've also considered additional sizes and, and uses, uh, such as on tablet. So this doesn't represent the full spectrum, uh, but there is a responsive design plan across a multitude of device sizes. So now we'll walk through in a little more detail some of the exchanges features. So you'll notice across the top, we uh, will provide access to the pair selector, wallet connector, and user menu. Uh, down the left-hand side allows for easy access to your balances and order form. And these are the primary areas where users will start uh, their experience with the exchange. And it also leaves plenty of space for the primary portion of the page to display all the market data. The colors highlight key user interactions, as Emily mentioned. You'll notice the electric blue subtly accentuates the BlockNet brand, as well as the user experience. A couple of the features we're really excited about uh, include the vertical depth chart. And uh, we really love how it relates to the data display in the price chart. It also helps optimize the space used across all the different screen sizes. Uh, one of the thing that we're really excited about is the pair selector. So let's go ahead and take a closer look. The first coin um, 
beautifully aligns with the blue that we've chosen uh, with a highlight uh, and provides access uh, to the coins below. First, the coins in your wallet and uh, then additional coins. So once the first coin is selected, a summary will display in line. Um, and at this point, uh, we are providing the pair coins uh, for the second selection, again with our blue highlight. Uh, users may search for coins in real time. And then once the second coin is chosen, the select button becomes active and allows you to refresh the exchange view. Uh, one of the last design elements we'd like to share is the expanded view of the price chart. That's just one tap away, and this graph will provide additional interactivity. Lastly, we'd like to share um, some of the mobile screens. So here, uh, providing all the same features and functionality using our design. And accessing those through the bottom tab navigation. So to sum up our design reveal, uh, we're really excited to get to work with BlockNet on this exchange, and we're even more excited for uh, what's to come. So as was mentioned um, up front in the initial um, kind of discussion of the reveal, we've got a link there uh, for a discussion on Reddit for questions. And um, we look forward to, to kind of hearing what you guys think about uh, the design. We've been really excited to work on it and really happy with where it's ending up. We've also posted uh, all of the BlockNet social uh, media links that you can go out and start to further this conversation. And as was mentioned at the beginning, um, the recording of both the YouTube Live and the video from uh, Zoom will be posted across these social channels. So if you want to go back and um, re-review or look further or pause in on design elements that we showed today, you can do so. Arlen, is there anything you, else you want to say in closing? Uh, well, definitely to thank everybody for, for listening and watching. I hope you're excited um, and I hope you're doubly excited for the production release of this UI, which is coming soon. Um, a couple of other remarks. Uh, when As we approach release, we have a number of milestones and additional developments on the way. Uh, a short list of this is um, we are uh, we're very excited about the TradingView integration into the front end. Um, if anybody knows TradingView.com, they'll know how cool this is. Um, we have a, a bot skeleton in Python. Um, this is going to enable people to easily build bots, which will talk to our very new API. So you can you can control the decentralized exchange, um, at least your trades on it, using bots. Um, we have order book enhancements coming. We have a visual blockchain explorer, but for into blockchain applications like the decentralized exchange. Um, we got a new BlockNet website coming up. Um, we have integration into 0x, Ethfinex, and um, through Ethfinex access to Bitfinex's order book. And that will enable a whole lot of liquidity for a very new exchange upon launch. I hope you're really excited about that. So please stay in touch with us on Rocket Chat and on our social channels as we ramp up to the production release. Have a great weekend. Thanks again, everybody. Thanks for listening and watching and critiquing our boardroom. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>